Third point, dealing with materialization and dematerialization in culture, I would like to make, and the most obvious and omnipresent aspect I want to emphasize is the fundamental U-turn in civilization process. Uh, for thousands of years, culture had been established, maintained, and developed through materialization. Now, the direction of this process has been reversed. Culture is produced and reproduced. The culture becomes real and transformed and distributed through dematerialization in the form of information and communication technologies and digital media, networks, domains, fields, spaces, and algorithms. As after Gu Gutenberg, technology-driven culture prevailed over all our oral and ritual paradigm, thus becoming immeasurably more powerful. Nowadays, uh, ICT culture prevails over the written paradigm becoming as a digital culture more powerful than the written one to the same extent the written one was more powerful than the spoken one. Culture has realized and accepted that the virtual is more real than physical, that the digital is more real than the analog, that the electronic is more real than the tangible. Of course, according to efficiency, and according to performance ability, since efficiency is the only real standard. Since a sign, or data, idea, value, knowledge are faster and more available, more penetrating, and at the same time more precise and more abundant of higher quality if they are presented in the dematerialized form of a numerical code combination of imperceptible elect electric impulses or me mental procedures. Culture has always been prevailing on the imaginary over the given, of the spiritual over the material, and of the intangible over the temporal. The output of the material one is limited. The output of immaterial one is unlimited. Thus, a code record is mightier and more far-reaching than its tangible physical correlative. Of course, limitation is a code's inherent characteristic too, because a code is limited in its kind and can be canceled by another code or anti-code. One should take that into account. The technical protocols of software hardware and interface format migrations and emulations are to, provide, are to provide us with the continuity of easy and safe access and use in spite of the innate trans, transience of the digital forms which are in the continual imminent transformation and conversion. The code is put into the operation logically. The matter is ruled by the laws of nature the code by the laws of logic, the laws of thoughts. The natural laws cannot affect the mental laws. No external factor can transform a correct dedu deduction into an incorrect one, or incorrect conclusion into a correct one. Two plus two makes four, both in war and in peace, both in youth and in old age, both at the freezing point and at the melting point, both at the bottom of the sea and at the top of the Himalayas, both on the stone and on the paper and both on the screen and on the optical cable. In an optical cable, a thought is traveling at the speed of light. In the culture of dematerialization, one applies an e equation related to Einstein's one this one would be like E equals IC square. In this equation, E stands for energy, which is equivalent to the results of the multiplication of information and the square of the speed of light. One could say the formula means that if you accelerate enough the information, it, it turns into energy. We can conclude that 
in the culture of materialization, the change of the state of things and of the world depending primarily upon the mass, upon the acceleration of the critical quantity, while in the culture of dematerialization, the change of the state of things and of the world depends on information, more precisely on a code, mental and logical processing, and on the acceleration of the critical quality. The culture of dematerialization includes dematerialized forms of identity and authorship, dematerialized forms of creativity and art, dematerialized forms of realization and research, knowledge and education, dematerialized forms of conflicts and security, dematerialized forms of power, repression and control, dematerialized forms of irrationality, madness and illness, dematerialized forms of capability, skills and competencies, dematerialized forms of politics. The culture of dematerialization includes the dematerialized way of establishing and reproducing social relations and social hierarchies. The culture of dematerialization includes the re-realized notion of contemporariness, which does not mean simply now, today, or in accordance with the current moment, but a simultaneous duration of many independent time orders. Maybe you believe it, it is dangerous and alienated, but I believe it is challenging and emancipatory because it expands and deepen and accelerate the intangible but only real domain of our freedom. Now, I would like to further debate how this epochal trend, this U-turn in civilization, demonstrates itself in libraries. Let me recognize three phases of the process of dematerialization in libraries. These three phases are adaptation, evolution, and revolution. Towards, uh -huh, be before I, I continue, then I would like to to show you another short clip, just to illustrate this part of my presentation. This will be the video clip on World Digital Library.
되었으나 황제의 존재와 Okay, this is real. This is working. You please, if you don't know, go there and check it. <laughs> Believe me. For example, this small interface for translating with the focus, it's working. Yes, check it. Uh, so this is revolution in front of our eyes. Towards the end of 20th century, the libraries and librarians successfully adopted to demands and challenges of the new technologies. However, the unstoppable penetration and continued impact of modern information and communication technologies, which continually colonize all aspects and domains of our daily life, are forcing the libraries of the 21st century to move on up from the stage of adaptation to the stage of evolution. That is an internal generic transformation. So the libraries have changed for good and librarianship will never be the same. Strong impact of the ever expanding and all persuasive ICT and digitization applications in our daily work makes this evolution so fundamental and far-reaching that it should be described as revolutionary. I am not saying this for a rhetoric effect. What I have in mind is the fact that through this ongoing evolution, the libraries of today are redefining not only the task, work, procedures, and ambitions of the libraries, but also some of the key categories of our civilization, such as property, culture, economic relations, creativity, space and time, public, and so on. For example, the ongoing negotiations between the publishers, authors, libraries, and Google are changing the way we see publishing, distribution, and libraries. And most importantly, the definition of intellectual property and the boundary dividing the public and the private sector. The libraries of today have achieve the momentum which is lifting them from the domain of loyalty and management of the autori authorial and other private rights into a domain which is ch characterized by e expansion of non-profit, open, universally accessible, and public mode of ownership, resulting in publicity of cultural assets, knowledge, information, content, and values. <clears throat> 